everyone. I'm Megan Cullop, along here with Scott Micklin. Hey, Megan Cullop. <laughs> hey. How are you? I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, that was so ex- I was nodding off over here. I'm sorry. So yeah, you know, well, yeah. You know, Thanks. well, you know, it is yeah, the morning. It is. It's true. Happy Friday so, to you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Love the Friday. So much promise. I know. We talked about this last time, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it's a yeah. day of promise. Right? There's two days ahead of us. What will we accomplish? You probably more than me. Probably. I know that for a fact. Yes. Right now. Yeah, I can yes. say that. Although so. you do your projects here and there. Yeah, you know, that's true. I do. Yeah. I do. But, yeah. you know, but anyway. Welcome, everyone. This is our uh, Solutions from the Street program here on KSJE. It is the program that we look for um, challenges or things that maybe we want to improve in our community. And then we find a uh, non-governmental uh, agency, representative, group of people, whatever the case may be, that maybe is uh, helping to uh, change that for the better. That's right. A good solution, a positive solution. Yes, solutions-focused journalism. That's exactly. That's what they call it. That's what we're doing. Yes. Exactly. And so this week, we are talking about housing, affordable housing, housing for families, and uh, groups that are helping to s- solve that challenge. That is a challenge. It's a very, very pressing challenge across the entire nation, really. That's true. And definitely in our community. Very true. And so when you think of affordable housing and housing projects, you have to think about Habitat for Humanity. Absolutely. And that's what we did. When I think of Jimmy Carter, I think of Habitat for Humanity, Well, he's too. a big, famous volunteer famous for Habitat supporter. for Humanity. Yes. That's true. Very true. But we have brought on the executive director of the local chapter, Trace Rios, Habitat for Humanity, and we want to bring her on the program. Good morning, Cindy Haas. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for coming in, and uh, congratulations on a successful um, car show that you just had yes. for, your, for Habitat. That's wonderful. It was last Saturday, and we were... So thankful to have a good turnout. We had sponsors behind us this year. Um, yeah. And then we had 91 cars show up. It was amazing. Look at this picture on the screen. I just wanted to show <laughs> people just wow. how, how crammed you had yes. been into downtown. It was yeah. so yeah. yeah. It took, it took over Main Street there. We did. It was blocked off from um, Miller to Lock Street, and we almost filled the whole thing up. We had 55 vendors. And the foot traffic was amazing. People really showed up to support us, and we're so thankful for that. Wonderful. Well, congratulations, because all that helps you raise money for what we're talking about today, which is helping these families that are building homes for their, themselves, their family. Yes. Yep. And so, affordable housing in San Juan County. And right. And so, can you remind me how many houses Habitat, Trace Rios Habitat for Humanity has helped to build? I know they predate both of us probably yes. being here, but it's been, they've been active for a very long time. Yes. And this is our 15th build that we are currently working on in Aztec. Okay. So. Very good. And yeah. so you, have, and I know it took you a while to find a family, but you it found did. a family. We did, yeah. We talked about that, you and I, and uh, and tell us a little bit about this this family and the build. <clears throat> so this is a family of three, Ricky and Brenda Perez and their eight-year-old granddaughter, Rena. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so they're a pretty, pretty neat family. They are raising her, so giving her a of her own her own room and a good environment and it's close to the Aztec High School so it's a really neat location um, nice so we got to do the groundbreaking and since then they've working on the um, concrete getting everything the forms and everything poured so we are hoping um, in the next month to start having volunteer days and it's gotcha. a very big part of our program as well as we are volunteer ran and that's how we get stuff done. So. Right. So, so this family is going to be helping to build their own home, basically, yes. too, along with other uh, community volunteers. Yes. The partner families are required to put in 200 hours of sweat equality per adult in the house. Friends and family can help, so they're very involved in building the house. Um, the plans are kind of set, but then once we go in with paint and cabinets and flooring, they have a huge part of selecting that stuff, so nice. it is their home. Very good. Yes. And this is a picture of the family doing the groundbreaking, yes. right? Moving, throwing some dirt around. So yes. Very cool. Megan, I'll stop talking. Well, I <laughs> just want to press into the concept of sweat equity, right? Yeah. yeah. So the goal is that people are not just being given something, they yeah. have some buy-in too. Absolutely, and um, they do have to buy the house. We do not give them the house, so I think that's a common misconception of right. Habitat. 
um, th we sell them the house zero percent interest at cost. Okay. And so, and that's the house, the land, and everything on gotcha. it. Gotcha. So, um, with that, we're able to keep the payments very low. Right. And then building, we're still, this is a 1,400 square foot home, two bedroom, two bath, one car garage, and we're still looking at about 192000 so it's wow. When expensive. you're at cost. That, at, at cost. That it's is. expensive right now. Yeah. yeah it's expensive, so, but still compared to sure. 300000 mm -hmm. or rent. Um, yes. Yeah. So we're hoping, you know, their payments are still way lower than rent. and yeah. Indeed. Um, and they're building that equity like most yes. homeowners do. And, and, you know, when they make all the payments, they will have that free clear, basically, yes. right? And so that's also part of... Um, building neighborhoods and, and building ownership in these neighborhoods, right, yes, with these families? Definitely. So. And what is the process of selecting a family? So there's a criteria that they have to meet for a family of four, say they um, can't make over 52000 a year. They have to have some type of inadequate housing, such as uh, leaky roof, no electric, overcrowding. Um, it's pretty broad. And we do look at their credit. There's no magic number. However, um, we have to make sure that they don't just that they can run bills pay. up yeah. and mm -hmm. not pay. That they really are trying. It really is a hand up, not a handout, is one of our slogans because we are helping people that are really trying that right. just need that extra. But um, the statistics on breaking, you know, generational poverty and helping people that's been in habitat homes is really neat. Like how it gets them and their families that step up moving forward for generations. So absolutely, it's right. awesome. Very good. And I would think for a lot of these families, maybe it's been a, a while, if ever, that, that maybe anyone in the family has owned a home. Maybe they've been renters all the time or yes. have just been aspiring to do that, but for mm -hmm. whatever reason have not been able to get the down payment together or whatever. I think yes. for a lot of folks, that's a real um, hurdle for home ownership is trying to scrape together those tens of thousands of dollars maybe for that down yes, payment. And absolutely. So, and that's what the Habitat Program I think helps with, right, with that sweat equity is they don't have to do that. There is a, a small down a chunk payment. Of cash. They do have a, a small percentage. I believe it's 1500 I may be. Right. It, it's small. but the, So they do sure have enough. a little skin in the game. But not 20%, still, but not, like a normal, not a big like, amount, a, so. like a traditional mortgage yes. would ask you for. So there is, there is that. And they're putting in that sweat equity, which adds up yes. over time as as well. I know the one thing I always think is really cool is when you're building a house from scratch, the families do get to maybe pick a few of the things maybe that they want, maybe some mm -hmm. of the finishes or some of the, if they want a, you yes. know, black stainless steel or regular stainless steel appliances or whatever the case may be, as long as it's in the budget, mm -hmm. you know, they can put a little bit of their final touches on it. And when they have children, they can paint those <laughs> bedrooms whatever color, whatever they want, whatever the child wants, right? Yes. And we are fortunate we have Whirlpool. They actually um, furnish the appliances, the appliances which nice. is amazing. And then we have Green Sheen Paint, and they are now furnishing the paint. So that's nice. really neat. Very good. So we have some good support behind us. And yeah. then the community coming together, all the fundraisers we do, and then we do get grants and stuff like that. But it takes a lot to get a yeah. home built. And it, exactly. The right. community has just been amazing, though. We've seen... That's them really rally behind us. <laughs> that's good to see. And so you mentioned that the slab has been poured for this build yes. in the Aztec area. And so what's the time frame? What would you say? I know it probably is dependent on weather and things yes. like that. But um, what, are you, what are you hoping for? When do you think the family might be able to move in? Do you think? They normally say it takes about six months. And it's just really dependent on contractors. Um, we've had a little shift in that this year. Just everybody's really busy. So... Um, I really honestly don't know time frame. Normally okay. I say six months and we just poured, so. Gotcha. So probably not going to be before Christmas, unfortunately, this time, but. Right. Um, but maybe spring. Spring, yes. You know, that's spring what we're 2025. hoping for. So. That would be exciting to, to be able to move in. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, um, now that the slab has been poured, there'll be some opportunities for volunteers to. Yes. Help, right? And we do have a list for volunteers. They can email me at Habitat San Juan at gmail.com okay or go onto our website tracerieshabitat.com and you can sign up for volunteering there and we can get you on the list and keep everybody updated there you go megan you and i should go out there we'll do our best jimmy carter impression yes. and throw, and, and throw a hammer or something throw a hammer what do you think? <laughs> yeah we should <laughs> a I couple actually, of nails. Uh, i've done a habitat house have you now i did one in college i was okay let's see what was i doing i was drilling sheetrock which sounds Sounds hard, yeah. but they show you how to, you know, they show you how to do it. They don't just like hand you the. That's good. 
nail gun and say, good luck. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> help. the vision of you with a power tool is a little, it's a little concerning scary. for me, but it okay. Was I'm glad you got some training. But I had a hard add on. Good for you. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. And Cindy, I imagine the same thing here, right? You will train yeah. your volunteers if they're given some piece of equipment that they've never had to use before or, or what have you. Our contractors are on site, so um, when volunteers are there, they're definitely. Very guided good. and excellent and it's opportunity for other people to learn now you know how to dry, do drywall I so do. you don't need to fix it I so know. yeah well, good learning opportunity that's very true that's very true Cindy, you were mentioning another event maybe uh, around the house construction in october that you're working to put together yes yeah, so we're putting together a women's build so it, we don't have a date yet it will be coming out soon you think it'll be in october though end of october is what we're looking at uh -huh. just so we make sure there's some walls to do stuff with but okay and it's um, just an event for women to come out and help with yes, this project? Yes. Um, well, I have and breast cancer awareness just kind of rallying behind. It is a small fundraiser, so it'll be $25, and that'll include a shirt and lunch. Um, and then just to spend the day, you know, building at this point. I can't say what we'll be doing, whether there be okay. hammering or painting. Might or be sheetrock, might be two by fours, who knows? Yes, but <laughs> it's a really good day for individuals or, um, you know, groups of people, okay. companies to come out and support. and. Um, Right. We will update that information on our Facebook page and on our website. So if you want more information, you can look at that. Okay, there. very good. You were mentioning some of the companies that help you um, to keep the costs low for these projects, right? Whirlpool being one of them yes. and and many of the other ones. But um, it's got to be, It's I've never built a house, but I can only imagine how many different things that go into a home. I yes. know it's a major economic driver too, right? it is. home construction. Absolutely. So That's a lot of... It's constant, just trying to get the funding and keep it going is... Right. But that's wonderful. That's and again, it's part of what Habitat has been doing here for a number of years yes. with all the homes that you have built and all the families that you've gotten into um, some permanent housing. And I imagine then, is the work starting then on the next house, or do you want to get this one a little more completed first? We will get this one a little more completed first. Um, we have a promising candidate coming up, so nice. we're not currently taking applications um just because we do have a lot of irons in the fire so okay well and i know you don't want to get overextended either no. i'm sure if you could you'd love to build three houses at a time yes. and some chapters do that in bigger communities but absolutely with our volunteer base we don't want to burn them out either because we do have a good group of people that continue to help us year to year with our houses so i'm sure they're excited to see the slab yes. board and, and know that they'll be asked to help soon so especially with not being able to build last year we really wanted to and so everybody's really excited and good moving forward very good it's a great program it's a fantastic program. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, getting people into, into homes and, uh, and and teaching them a bit about home ownership and those types of things. I think that's also part of it, isn't yes. it, the program? And we do provide um, financial classes and home ownership type stuff. And then when they're building on the home, uh, then they'll know how to um, fix things and keep it maintained and that right. type of stuff as well. So It's a little different than renting. Yes. Yeah. So that's very <laughs> yes. true. Yes. Megan, right? Right, yes. yes. This is why I rent, is I don't know how to fix anything. So, Well, if it was drywall, you could fix it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about where it stops, gotcha. and changing light bulbs. I got that down. Okay, yeah. well, that works. Got so, that one down. There you go. All right. <laughs> very, very good, but that's cool. But uh, exciting, again, and again, I know um, there are some Habitat houses in the county. There are some in Aztec. You, you build, I know, where you can get a deal on land and things like that. Yes. And so you're always open to negotiating and hearing from landowners that may want to help Habitat for Humanity? Yes, definitely. Um, we do have, we actually have three lots in Kirtland that was donated to us. Okay. Which is amazing. And then we have one other spot in Aztec. Um, and then we do have a home in Bloomfield that was donated to us that it had to be gutted. It needs some work. So we're hoping to get somebody. Okay. You know, in the Bloomfield. So do you have a lot of irons in the fire, we don't do, you? We do, yes. So, yeah. so we're kind of like, we're not going to take applications right at the moment because we are working on this through all these stuff, other things that you've got going we on. have a lot coming up too so we are yeah. very excited yeah congratulations Thank you. well it's great to it's great to see because again I, the these programs and projects build community and help with home ownership and i think make um these new homeowners more invested in the community mm -hmm. um and all those positive things which yes. which we talk about and uh, as we mentioned coming in um one of the more famous habitat builders is former president carter who was building houses building well into his 70s for sure at least 70s right yeah so yeah 
it's a it's amazing and so i think for a volunteer that you can probably find a job for people of any age who yes. want to volunteer on these Absolutely. projects for the houses they have to be 16 and over but okay. um if people want to volunteer and help out that are younger, they can help out in the ReStore. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities in there. So if people are able to do the job site but really want to get in and help, they can join us at the ReStore. Um, we have furniture, appliances, home improvement items. Uh, and All kinds of things. It's been going really well. We've had day to day it almost changes. You go in there once a week, it's like a new store. We have had tons of donations which has been just amazing and terrific remind us of shopping. the address of the restore it is 1915 east murray drive it's over by the skating rink yeah on that side of town that's right so and then um the phone number for that is 505-592-7761 and we do pick up donations so if you have heavy items and you don't have a vehicle we do come pick them up for you so good to know very cool. I think I still have a dishwasher in my garage I, I, that has <laughs> you your go. name on it, Restore. So Perfect. I will give you a call, and uh, and we can. It was working fine, so it should be should be in good shape. Good. So there you are. Have you ever been over there, Megan? Yes, with the MLK Day of Service. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is something we'll be talking about in the future. We will. That'll be here before we know it. Yes, it will. That's that's true. But there's a lot of great things. So if, whether you're shopping or donating, I think the Restore is a great option for yes, folks. Yes, absolutely. So that's terrific to know. And uh, as we're showing on the screen right now, another graphic I borrowed from your Facebook page <laughs> of the different things you can find there. But again, if you're remodeling, you can find hardware, doorknobs, lighting fixtures. Doors, windows. You know, doors, anything, and, yeah. Yes. Tools, right. um, some really neat furniture. Yeah. You just never Sometimes know there's an antique in there. in there. You never know, right? Yes. Or there's something else or, or appliances. So lots of things yes. that are available. So, so that's great. Very, very good. And then coming up, um, the famous um, prime rib dinner. I know you're planning that already, right? Yes, For early 2025. It is. So it'll be February 7th at Sunray Park and Casino. And we did sell out the last two years. So um, tickets will go on sale October 1st. So okay. if you're interested, coming up. For people to get tickets bought sooner than later. So yeah, no makes kidding. it nice. <laughs> okay. Very, very good. That's good to know. Megan, any final thoughts for our hmm. Habitat for Humanity? Final thoughts. I know. Just it's really fun if you're interested in being outdoors, doing some community service work. It's a fun option. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Get to, again, use those muscles and, yes. you know. Build up some strength. Yeah. Your core. Right. And maybe <laughs> learn a bit about construction, too. Oh, yes, for as sure. These things are putting, going together. So that's great. Very good. Cindy, anything else that we need to uh, let our audiences know about with uh, Trace Rios Habitat for Humanity? Um, we've I covered think we've all the major covered things. All the major things. We just really want to say thank you to the community and the support that they've given us. And um, this last year has been great. So just thank you to everyone and thank you for having us. Today. You bet. We really appreciate it. We are glad to help spread the word thank about you. the work that you all do because it's a great organization. I know a couple of your board members, and, and so, again, kudos to them for their guidance, I think, too, yes. in getting all these things done and, and supporting you through the things that you want to do. And we, we just got three new board members last night. Um, oh, good. We had our annual meeting, so we had right. some time out and some come in, so it'll be a neat switch, but oh. we have great board members there. Backbone. <laughs> Very good. Well, congratulations for all of your you. success and keep us informed of how things go. Sounds good. And uh, we'll get you back here soon when there's an update. So, wonderful. Sounds good. Thank you very, very much. That is our Solutions from the Street program for this week. And uh, if you have an idea, audiences, you can always let us know. Always let us know by going to ksje at sanjuancollege.edu. Send us an email, and we'll look into it. If you have an idea of another community group that's doing great things and helping to solve some challenges in our community, We'll get them on the radio. Yes. So, because there's lots of things going on. Even though Megan and I know a lot, we may not know everything. We certainly don't know everything. No, that's for sure. But most things. Most. Most things. <laughs> we pretend we do. Okay. All right. You're pretty smart. I think you're pretty smart. I learn something from you every time we get together. That's true. Yeah. I don't know if you learn anything from me. Maybe you learn what not to I do. I learn about what not being to do. content, enjoying uh, life. From me? From you. Oh, all yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, good, I guess. Good. Okay. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, a reminder here on Fridays on KSJE, 
Our Solutions from the Street program is on the second and fourth Fridays of the month. And then on the other Fridays, the first, third, and fifth, we're in a completely different mode with a third co-host, Scott Duran joins us, and we open up the phone lines. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's Yeah, that's really fun, too. Yeah. I mean, whatever is interesting in your world, we want to hear about it. You can call in. Phone lines are open. Share whatever you want to share. That's right. So, We've had some interesting shares. We have. And that usually caller from something. New York City. I know. Yeah. A listener from New York. We love it. We love it. It's writing a children's book. I know. That's so cool. Right. And Dyscalcula. Yeah. So there is that. So that's how you can keep track of what you'll hear on Fridays here on, on KSJE. What you hear on Saturdays is a whole different ball of wax. It is a whole different ball. The eclectic music mix to start your weekend, Radio Free Saturday morning, 9 to 11 a.m. every Saturday morning. Each week I choose a theme. I collect songs within that theme. Then you never know what you're going to hear. It could be a different genre, certainly a different decade, you know, folk, but rock, Spanish music. I mean, it's classical across the board. Right. Um, and this week, I have special guest host Bob Underwood, oh. and we together did a theme of combination songs. Okay. So songs with combinations. So like, sugar and spice is a combination. Oh, okay. Or, right. or love and war is a combination, or whatever. Okay. Um, and so each two hours of two hours. songs that are combination. So not mashups. No, not two, different songs. not two different artists or whatever, okay. but just... Combination titles. The, combination titles. I got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Leather and Lace. Leather and... I was legitimately just thinking that. Oh, okay. But yes, oh. Leather and... Well, it's see, because we've it's worked a too much song. together. It is a beautiful song. <laughs> yeah. So. Stevie Nicks and Don Henley. Right. Classic. Okay. So... There you go. Two hours. Two hours. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, following your show, the Scott Duran Show. The World Beat Show with Scott <coughs> Duran. And this is another really fun show because you're definitely going to hear music that you don't hear stateside because yeah. it's, uh, he chooses a country or a flavor of music and then plays a whole hour of that. And it's always, I think it's a really interesting show. A lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. The third hour of local programming. That's right. On Saturday mornings. So there you go. Perfect. Very good. Well, everyone, that is our program for this Friday. We thank you for, for joining us. Cindy Haas again from Habitat for Humanity. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And uh, we will see you again soon, everyone. We'll see you next Friday. You're at KSJE.